trying to wrap your mind around this farm, uh, this colony, uh, leaves everyone, everyone, not just you, not just your neighbor, everyone feeling so much loss. Um, you know, it's a normal reaction to feel forsaken because we've been patronizing this thing, calling it the father, uh, without realizing that that action alone, uh, through the psychological implication, is, you know, maintaining a father figure. So when you learn that the father figure or the thing you patronize is the one that's killing you and catching in on your estate uh, is the one that's tricking you out, is the one that's prostituting you, uh, the one that's maintaining debt on your back, that thing, you know, formerly your father. The only thing that you know, you know, it, it's, it's such a loss. But you are not alone. You are absolutely not alone. Um, this thing is there to redistribute all known assets. It's there to make profit off of your illness, off of your disease, off of your discomfort, off of every action you take in this life over and over and over again. Every action that you maintain already has a preceding action before it maintaining revenue streams into congressional coffers, maintaining revenue streams into attorney pockets, now, everybody knows who listens to us, the definitions of a turn and to a turn, which means to um, pay homage to another Lord God or landlord. That's not your friend. Friend of court is not your friend. That is the internal revenue service. Well, what's revenue versus taxation? You know, everybody needs to be aware of what's going on and, and what happens day after day after day after day. No matter what you are going through, all of these pressures around you, you're losing your house, you're losing your kids through the court process, you're going through a divorce, you've got CPS on your back, you've got adult protection on your back. All of these things are driving, driving the economy by your productive value. You are seen as nothing more than a thing, a res, a resident an individual, a citizen. These are fictional creations. Man, woman, friend, doctor, teacher. All of these titles are fictional creations to maintain revenue streams into attorney pockets. And the attorney isn't just a, a bar card holder. The attorney is whoever's paying homage to that other lord god or landlord that turns on you. That's the one that gives you up, that delivers you up to another entity and allows your body to be tricked out and used in all of these ways, manners, shapes, and forms. Now, as you are perpetually producing for this corporate structure, what are you getting out of it? Well, $100 a month of food stamps, medical assistance, housing allotments, Clothing allotments, maybe? Shoe allotments? What is that? You are making, by your productive value, upwards of $33 billion. $33 billion in revenue. Death derivatives through the medical industry, psychological industry, criminal industry. On the front end, and, and what you know, you have the productivity of taxation. Well, taxation and consumption go together hand in hand. Corporate governance, of course, being the consumer market. They sell you everything you want to buy. I was in a store the other day, and, um, of course, I, I was, I had a child with me, so all of these gimmicks were, were just flashing lights and, and so exciting for this child. And at one point, she picked up a, a box of um, cloth that sold as a, a craft. And I'm looking at this box, and it's remnants. It's material remnants that are being sold as something else. So here we are, 
consumer society were purchasing garbage from corporations that are sold as crafts. Okay, let that sink in a little bit because everything that you know is based on this consumer model. You consume insurance, you consume medical industry, you consume uh, psychiatry, you consume the criminal industry, you consume so many things, and you put labels on everybody. There's there's now gay people, and there's homosexuality, and there's transgender, and there's all these things that you're buying. These are concepts. When in reality, those are beings. They don't really have a title in their natural state unless you consume that, unless you buy, unless you participate. And another word for participate is partake. If you partake of this tree of knowledge, if you participate, you have just bought from the snake in your garden. Let that sink in. As the consumptive good, you are partaking of the tree of knowledge right now, real time, in your own garden. And when that occurs, that garden is no longer yours because you're consuming somebody else's stuff. Titles, concepts, their garbage, all of these things. You are the consumptive good and you produce from every variant imaginable. And it's time to stop doing that and get off of this farm. Stop buying those concepts. You know, I'm watching um, uh, the mainstream media today, for example, and Charlie Crist, former GOP governor in Florida, he was a Republican governor, he's coming in to run again for governor as a Democrat. Now, if that ain't Hegelian dialectic, I don't know what is. And everybody has to really open their eyes right now and look at this because the same thing happened back in the 1920s into the 1930s. The Democratic Party was actually the conservative party before the paradigm shift in 1938 was started thesis. And they had actually implicated the KKK. It was David Simmons who came up with the KKK and promoted this through a government function. He was a Democrat. And as a, quote, conservative conservative party, he was against black people and everything else. Human beings, society, civil, civilization or citizenry, they were not buying into that. And they were arguing against it, arguing against it. And they knew this because that's the foundation of the Hegelian dialectic. So here they have the KKK. They bring it up to par. By 1938, there was a paradigm shift and the Democrats became the liberals and the Republicans became the conservative party, and then by the 1960s, the liberals came in as the Democrats, the same creators of the KKK, the same promoters of the KKK, came in to offer affirmative action. Well, since there was no racism within humanity before that, all of those funds, those federal dollars that just had an influx in the 1960s with affirmative action programs and female programs and everything like that, those monies all went into attorney pockets, and you paid for it as the consumptive good. You bought into the concept not only of the KKK, the bipartisanship of the Democrats and the Republicans and independents and liberal parties. You bought all of that, and in the end, what do you get out of it? Absolutely nothing except for your demise. As is consumptive good, you are used from birth to death and everything in between, cradle to grave. Now, tonight I've got a very special guest. I've got Bo with me, and I wanted to really touch on some <clears throat> aspects of what he's currently going through with everything surrounding him and family members who have bought into the system, who have walked away from relativity and reality and who have bought into the system and are now actually absolutely paying with their lives and I need everybody to listen because we do not want this to happen to others that is our whole purpose here sharing with you week after week day after day teaching 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 please hear me please hear me because it, it's horrifying to witness these things day after day, 
moment by moment we're witnessing these horrifying things maintained by the medical industry, psychological industry, and criminal industries via actions of Congress. This is genocide, and you are within it. You are the human race, and psychopathy is wiping you out. A psychopath is not human. They do not have the frontal lobe. They are not the evolved species. And you are being tricked out by psychopaths in a race for genocide since 1947 National Security Act here. Before that, it was different variants on, on legal mechanisms, euthanasia programs, um, Auschwitz, you name it, you know, those were all in your face. Now, in westernized civilization or westernized thought concepts, you have this quiet action of genocide that nobody's realizing because they feel like they're being taken care of in this matrix. Matrix stems from the word womb. It's an artificial womb. You feel really comfortable. You feel like you're protected because you're insured and you have all of these mechanisms and programs there at your fingertips without realizing what you're consuming. You're consuming your own death. You're consuming your own demise. And um, I think I've got Bo on. Bo, are you there? Can you hear me? I can. Now, okay. Well, well, as you know, okay, um, and I can't stay the whole time here. Um, i got a function coming up. But I wanted to, while you're touching on this subject tonight, um, you know, bring up, well, as you know, you know, my kids are still being held hostage by court process. There's no lawful ability for the mother to hold the children. I did, you know, did nothing wrong ever. It's just my estate being in a state of seizure right now, which the battle is still ongoing. Um, now, with that, the she's been let go from her employment with the attorney general. She no longer holds that title, and they're trying to clean their hands and, and get away from the liability that they're facing at this time. And, um, you know, there's so many things that are ongoing at this time, but they have admitted that she is a criminal by the action of letting her go and getting rid of her to clean their hands. Right. The main reason I wanted to next was that in, because we've covered this um fairly well in documentation, but at this point, uh, my mother now has turned a, you know, turned for the worse, and I'm worried about them ever getting to see her again before her time expires here due to the accelerated process brought on by this medical situation we have now, in that, um, a few months back, she had um, a uh, procedure to remove her ovaries, I believe it was. Right. A hysterectomy. A hysterectomy. And a follow-up exam revealed a cancer vent in a lower abdomen that they treated her with chemotherapy and then after that series of treatments then they immediately diagnosed her with a brain cancer in her frontal lobe of which she underwent radiation therapy and got through like seven or eight of the procedures, you know, she had like another seven or eight to go, but it's just stopped it because it's almost killed her. I mean, she's um, in really in a lot worse shape than I've ever seen her. She's got a palsy in her, in her mouth and it's affected her speech. Uh, her thinking obviously has been affected. And so now they're trying to get her strength back up before they proceed further with any more treatments. Now, they're already saying that stopping this, this procedure at this point is going to nullify everything they've done so far. 
And so if she has, ever does recuperate, you know, they're going to be hitting her with radiation in the brain again, I'm afraid. And now looking at the pathology report, do you help me review here? You got the um, PDF. I know you have because you um, pointed some things out on it. Right. And in that, it's a word salad of words that, where if you read what they're actually saying, there was never any diagnosis of, of cancer in the abdomen in right. the first place. Right. And when I was going back through the records on this one, originally. Um, she went to her doctor for an annual lung x-ray, which doesn't exist unless you have really good insurance and they want to uh, maintain productivity by the insurance industry. And so we'll just go from start to finish. So in the beginning, she goes in for her annual lung x-ray. The doctor says at this point in time that they found a spot on her kidney, which cannot be identified by a lung x-ray. She buys into this. And immediately they start chemotherapy. There was no pathology on anything done at that time. There was no test to um, uh, absolutely evidence that she had cancer. Um, it was all made up. And what had happened is she bought this because the doctor, you know, of course, has all of these shiny things. And when I got the medical records, I was so um, horrified to find she had kept, thankfully, all of these advertisements. We have a state-of-the-art facility. We have new products. And, and these things are so shiny. They're like uh, magazines. And um, so I go along and I continue reading through the medical records, and there's still don't, no diagnosis. They start immediately chemotherapy. Of course, chemotherapy causes lesions in the frontal lobe. That's one of the... Um, things that it does and as she's going through chemotherapy she goes through all that health so basically this is chemical warfare being imposed on a human being because there's no diagnosis of cancer as she goes along eventually they say well that thing has went over into the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and, and everything else. Still no identifying pathology report. Still no thing de determining that she actually has cancer. They just sell it to her again. And again, through the medical records and all of her documentation, I'm finding all of these magazines and brochures and beautiful shiny things and and these advertisements after advertisements after advertisements. Right, so the whole thing that got her down this path is I kept telling her, well, you got great insurance. Right, so it'll cover everything, and and everything will be okay. And you, We'll just wrap you up inside of the matrix, inside of this artificial womb, and I love you to death. And so eventually she has the hysterectomy, and that's where that pathology report finally stems from. They finally come back with one. And it says in that report, like you said, um, the word salad. And part of that word salad, and I want everybody to listen very carefully, because if you have these records and you've been diagnosed with cancer, I would like to see your pathology reports. In the pathology reports, it says there is no sign of carcinoma. There is no sign of malignancy. There is no sign of anything. However, it probably went away due to the chemotherapy. Okay, do you see the implication there? Do you see the practice of genocide there? Um, now, coming forward to not even two months ago, is when they found the lesion on her frontal lobe. They told her it was it was a tumor, although it's it's caused by chemotherapy. They maintain radiation exposure against her, which again is chemical warfare and biological warfare against the human being. This is genocide. There was never, ever, ever, ever an actual diagnosis of any cancer. There was just a supposition. There was the um, illusion and color of these things in order to use her body to the fullest extent. Yeah, it's like they use color of medicine, like... We see in color of law all the time, and, and this pathology report is even almost written like a court paper. Right, right, and that's that's the whole gimmick is the use of language against the human being through the action of psychiatry. Now, what was 
um, interesting for me and what I'd like you to share with the all of our listeners is when you went to visit her in the hospital, how glorified it was and how much um, advertisement you saw when you were actually there and, and surrounded by all of this beautiful um, presentation. Yeah, first of all, it's a brand new facility. You walk in the door and, you know, it, it's very big, glorious looking, high ceilings for the intake on the first floor, and then you see literature on shelves, you know, for display, you know, very well printed, colorful, you know, good looking advertisement. On the day I visited her, within two hours, she had a visit from three different doctors, uh, two different nurses, and a priest. That was all within two hours, I was, two, three hours maybe. And there is a lot, a lot of presentation, a lot of word salad used by these doctors and, and uh, nurses. And, well, I can't answer that. We'll have to get the uh, eye specialist in here for that. You know, she's got an eye doctor and... These doctors are all specialized, and they have one field, and one field only, and they offer speculation into the other field, but say they have to back that up with another doctor, which to me indicates more money is coming off the spreadsheet for the insurance uh, for different diagnoses and exams and medications. And it's like everybody is in there, you know, holding their hand out for a piece of the action if you're a doctor. Right, and it's very swift. So you have these uh, various compartmentalized doctors and nurses and everything else coming at you. And what needs to be realized by everybody is this presentation and the fast-paced action of it is actually so you're not aware of what is covered by your insurance and what is not covered by the insurance. So... Um, say she has a headache and she needs an eye specialist. Well, the insurance only covers the eye specialist twice a year or three times a year or whatever it's going to cover. And eventually, this is how they're raising society, and this is the way that they get at the estate, at the home, at the property, at the toys, at the vehicles, at the outbuildings, at the ground itself. Whatever assets you have are being redistributed at the same time that they're using your body up um, with an action of genocide. And this is, everybody needs to be aware of this. Everybody needs to be fully aware of what's going on because, again, the illusion of and the cartoon structure, the advertisement effect and everything else, and the fast pace of it is what gets you in the end. So from cradle to grave again, and, you know, this is just now happening. She is in the hospital at this time. They have her surrounded with all of these advertisements and all of these specialists and everything else. So no bill has shown up, of course. But as I stated, um, the eye specialists will be labeled cosmetic later. The um, brain specialists will be uh, labeled as something that she didn't need, she didn't have necessity of. And every time she feels sick to her stomach or sick or or at um, in discomfort and she calls in another nurse or another doctor or whatever, the insurance policies state that you have to get pre-approval for all of these things, even if you're hospitalized. So because there's no pre-approval when you feel sick and you're puking or, or whatever else, all of this comes all at once. And this is what happened to me back in 2000 with my husband when they killed Donnie. Um, it was really fast paced. I was to the hilt extremely um, overwhelmed by everything that was going on around me and I didn't realize the flashing lights at that time. It wasn't until years later when I realized the aspect of being surrounded and, and just ran through a machine and then the bills started coming in. You know, not just the bills from the hospital bills. Um, what was not covered by his insurance. He went into rehab for 28 days. They let him go from rehab because his insurance ran out. Um, at that time, you know, he, and then he passed away within um, a month. In between, they had him sign a DNR order so that 
you know, they would be absolved of all of their um, liability in the end, and, and that was when I was gone and one time, and, and um, I mean, it was so overwhelming that you're not able, when you're inside of it, you're not able to be objective. You're not able to see what they're actually doing. And this is what we're here for. We're here to evidence these things so that other people can be aware before this happens to them, before they're used, before they're uh, mechanized and machine through this through this working machine. And um, it's just it's it's so horrifying to watch and witness. And I'm praying and praying and praying that so many people hear us now, because. Once everybody stops purchasing these things, buying into it, partaking of these things, this thing fails. And it's no longer beneficial for them to take our parents, to take our grandparents, to take our children. So and it, this seems to tie in with what I touched on Wednesday on the Bowen and Rockwell show with the low-intensity conflict uh, going on there and, you know, the... The, the whole thing with the insurance now being smoke and mirrors, you know, uh, on one side they're telling you, well, you got great insurance, and the other side they're selling you a bunch of stuff you never needed to begin with, and, you know, they they know darn well it's going to cause a uh, headache with the insurance allocation for the monies and funding for all this very expensive procedure and uh, hospital room and everything right. else with that, and so they're trying to you know sell the idea that you know you're you're comfortable, you got insurance, you know on the back end when this is all over, I'm afraid you know uh, death going to find himself um, not only in a world of hurt without his uh, wife of 53 years. Now they just had their wedding anniversary October 29th. Um, but um, he's also going to be left with all these bills that the insurance didn't cover. Right. And part of that, you know, when she's feeling discomfort inside of the hospital setting and feeling all of these things, it's most likely from the side effects of the medication. So they already have their predetermined outcome. They already know what she's going to experience based on the, the crap that they put inside of her, the medications, the everything else, and these reactive behaviors that she's experiencing. Of course, she's going to call for their help and everything else, and it's not going to be approved by the insurance. But these are all predetermined outcomes in the action of genocide. And that's what this show is all about. Leaving the farm is all about showing you what Congress is doing. This is actions of Congress. This is stemming from the 1947 National Security Act. Right. And it follows through into the 1974 um, Memorandum 200 of Dr. Henry Kissinger that says uh, depopulation, depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign or 1975, I keep getting, you know, conflicting information. We'll have to nail that down here. Well, that was 1974 with the Memorandum 200. 1975 was the introduction of the Population uh, Office of Population Affairs, which is the Department of Health and Human Services. Right. That is the depopulation program. That is the depopulation pro program. And what... People aren't realizing, you know, especially right now, they've just cut food stamps back or something um, I've been noticing in the media lately. That's the Department of Health and Human Services. They know exactly where you are. They know exactly how much pain you are in and what you'll do to survive. Yeah, they, they uh, reduced all these food stamp programs. And now, just today, I hear reports of, Tanks head for New York City uh, in preparation of rioting or some right. kind of presentation. You know, who knows what's going on on that psyop. Right, another false flag to put the people into fear. So they reach out and they garner the um, help and protection of the artificial womb again, the matrix. And, and that's what this is all about. So the minute you're in pain, the minute you uh, find yourself in disease or discomfort, you're going to reach out to the Office of Population Affairs, which is the Department of Health and Human Services. Which so sounds so Office. nice. Yes, it sounds another, beautiful. And it's another example of the low-intensity conflict, the battle for the uh, 
hearts and minds. Right. And winning hearts and minds is engaging us by putting the pressure upon us so we reach out and engage with the system. So we reach out and we say, oh, I need food stamps. I need cash assistance. I need my Social Security. I need veterans benefits. I need that. I need this. I need this. I need this. I need this. Because of your pressure that you're putting upon me, nobody realizes the back-end pressure. That is fourth-generation warfare. Warfare. That, those pressures that everybody's experiencing, including... Cancer, dis-ease, discomfort, all of those things are created for you. The Codex Alimentarius maintains your food bag through the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. You've seen the food pyramid? That is a feed bag. The same food pyramid is located on any other feed bag. Pig food, cow food, dog food. Cat food bags, that's the same thing you're looking at when you're looking at one of those bags. And you, and you know, when you see these advertisements, commercials on television, if you watch movies on Hulu, you know, they have these really nice presentations for the medical industrial complex with uh, drugs and things, you know, to help you better. And, you know, and the disclaimer is longer than the commercial. You know, side effects may include, you know, dis delusion, diarrhea, blah, 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 until, you know, death. Right. But it's a good thing. Ask your doctor. Right. Just take this handful of pills and it'll take care of all the side effects from that one. And we know that is facilitated and maintained through the Broadcasting Board of Governors. Absolutely. They've got international control of all known civil media. And if you want to read this, go to bbg.gov and click on their About page. That's amazing. They don't even try to hide it. No, they don't hide anything. And that, Those are the rules of the game. This game stems from, of course, Roman law and ecclesiastical law. And the rules of the game are that either, either you're aware or you're not aware. You're going to cho choose yourself as the authority and you're going to realize and know thyself or you're going to choose another father when you choose the other father you choose that option and this is what happens you end up on chemotherapy because you're believing in them you have left yourself you're gone from yourself you're gone from your own house you're gone from your mind and so they're going to protect you under the laws of infants giving them jurisdiction over your body your mind and soul Separation of the spiritual and temporal. And they get you to consent through the three variants that we talk about here, um, Meta, Soma, and Veta. And, um, you know, these things are, uh, you know, being sold to us, you know, yet still through the 113th Congress assembled. Right. Which we have right now to deal with. Um, you know, but it all starts, you know, through, through those mechanisms to garner the consent, and they don't care which one gets you, you know, they get you, uh, they basically, um, ship you off, basically, to the uh, department they need to redistribute you. Right, funnel you through for your productive value, and those are the rules of use of fraud. Yusuf Rupp says that your capacity, your earning capacity, your productivity never diminishes. Never diminishes. So you're going to be taken in morality, which is meta, psychology, which is soma, and by ethics, which is veta. Okay, so you've been taught ethics through such as Aristotle. You've been taught morality through such as Socrates. You've been taught psychology through such as Freud. Or, you know, going all the way back, you, you find Galen in them. But all of those concepts are sold to you so that you can be maintained on a farm. That is the action of education. Education is not a good thing. It's actually known as pedagogy, which means attendance on boys. Now, the metaphor of removal of the firstborn son is actually 
pedagogy. That's how you are removed. You're taken away from yourself, from your uh, relative state, and maintained in another state, which is the matrix, the artificial womb. So you don't want to be the authority. You don't want to take care of yourself. That's okay. You got another daddy waiting in the wings, and I will render you, says the other daddy. And that is the crucifixion of Jesus, your earth. You are torn apart by copy holdability. Um, you're maintained as intellectual property because you're subscribing to that concept. That means that you are a thought. And through the medical side of it, currently the way they directly do it is through this ICD-10. Is that correct? Right. And, and, that, and that's not just the medical side. The ICD-10 uh, concepts, the classification of diseases and disorders, is actually, it covers all three, uh, metasoma veta. So you're diagnosed as um, the fictional being of man, woman, you know, gender identity issues, you've got gender play, you've got um, um, entitlement theory, you've got the psychology of bipolarism, you've got psychology introduced with the um, cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance or disassociative behavior is known as schizophrenia, but that's really not what's going on that is cognitive dissonance because what you're doing is you're you're experiencing something and you disassociate from that thing to decrease the level of pain that you're feeling and that's what schizophrenia is that's what disassociative behavior is and it stems all the way from cognitive dissonance you don't want to be in the location you're at in your mind right now so you're going to locate yourself or or you're being elsewhere and look at yourself from the outside rather than looking out through your eyes this is the action against you creating now the ego, superego, and id, which is identification. And so you can look at your driver's license, for example. That thing says that you're able to do business as that fictional being. You're looking at yourself constantly from the outside rather than looking out of your own eyes and living as through relativity. And that, that, those concepts, those psychological concepts, are not, um, they're not really biological or anything. You can step out of that and get back into yourself by realizing what you are, whom you are, and that you are the authority. And, and it doesn't take very much. Jesus called it divesting yourself of all that possesses you. And that, that's all you have to do. Drop those titles. You have to get away from the psychological pressure upon you, which... You know, so many people think that they're experiencing this thing called depression. Now, depression is the action of pushing on you, depressed, to press down upon. So you have all of this force above you telling you you have to be a good mom, good dad, good citizen, good neighbor, be a good girl, good boy. Okay, all of that pressure is upon you, and you're not realizing that you already are, so you're striving to be something else. That is what depression is. And the feeling or the resultant um, reaction to that is, that is that terminology, depression. But it actually is the, is the force itself pressing upon you, making you and pushing you to be something else. Compulsion. To compel. To push and pull. Compulsion is to pull you from... Um, psychologically from another direction so for example um, as the vessel statutes are statements of compulsion they're pulling you into another form another um, being that's psychologically controlled and you're feeling as if that's a um, a different state of being because it is it's taking you outside of your original state of being and your ability to to um, uh, be in a relative state, offering you a new cognizance. That is the action of recognizing you. Not recognition, it's actually recognizing you into another state of being. And, and what that is, is it's altering your heading. You're no longer able to be, now you're being told what to be, how to be what you should be or ought to be or could be, and you're striving to be. That's coveting. That's what Jesus is trying to teach you. Don't covet. When you want something so bad, especially yourself, you're coveting the self, although you're already here. 
you're just not not realizing that you need to realize that and stand in your relative state so that you're not pushed or pulled in any direction by any outside force which is um you know you look at it from the economic standpoint you've got uh endogenous and exogenous forces at all times outside and from the inside so you're being inscribed described prescribed superscribes and subscribing to things so it's always constantly moving your body and your mind around and around and around but these are psychological forces once you drop those titles you stop being moved around and that's the most important thing that everybody needs to realize immediately because once that stops and you divest yourself of all the possesses you all those titles um concepts you are actually in the relative state and you're able to be that is the freedom that you seek that is the freedom that everybody seeks and it's right there all it is is realizing yourself your authority and disallowing and not allowing somebody to push or pull you in either direction by compulsory force or psychological implication <coughs> excuse me now this this whole uh mechanism you were telling me earlier here and let me just try to get the question posed correctly here and set up so you can answer it cuz I, I imagine this might take some doing to explain especially for the listening audience that may be hearing this for the first time but this this uh operation basically stemming from the three variations of law we covered meta soma veta and currently uh, codified and maintained as international classification of disease and disorders ICD-10 currently um you know considering ourselves then or as they consider us as vessels you know um they're repairing us due to the injury imposed you know by this confederacy currently the 113th congress but this stems back to the original charters under marine insurance uh right. born by you know um the underwriters right Let's see here subscribing the psychological construct and and it ties into uh FEMA which is 6 USC chapter 1 sub chapter 5 section 313 and through patent trademark and intellectual property right so what that is is you go all the way back to the original charters in the 1600s and if you read them you'll find that um this is a mutual venture okay there it's all in shipping and trade this is through 46 USC shipping and um it's actually called commerce and navigation and you can find all of these defined notions and concepts in the uh dictionary of commerce and navigation um uh, it's a free google book for anybody who wants to go to google and get that um but because it's a mutual voyage that's what mutual insurance is what had happened is when they um um began on this voyage back in the 1600s they said that you were lost and that they were bumping into you so like their vessels would crash into yours or your vessel would crash into theirs by injury that means being brought into loss so they're forcing you and imposing on you that your vessel is crashing into them by injury that that one word now with bottomry again stemming from the manufacturer statement of origin which is MSO birth record they're slamming that seal on the foot of the child and maintaining a bottomry bond on that child through the use of the birth certificate now because you're docking the child on somebody else's land on somebody else's water so they've got this great schematic going on France owns all the water um every country that you know of is floating on France's water and that brings us to the um master land lease agreement that Roosevelt and Churchill entered into I think it was 42 to rent those places that float on France's water so in order to rent those 
you have these the implication of those bottom rebonds at, upon the birthing of the vessel, which is the baby. Now, a bottom rebond and bottom re is relative to the only way that they can invoke those is by diagnosing that vessel. So, via the ICD-10 codes, they're diagnosing that vessel as being born. That's an injury. They're considering the action of birth an injury. Okay, you can be born by forceps, natural delivery, uh, breech birth, uh, C-section, multiple births. Those are all injuries maintaining that original bottom rebond. So what they're maintaining is that because you're injured, they now have to charge your estate in order to repair that vessel under the action of bottom rebond. And throughout your lifetime now, instead of just having found you a vessel, and, and anybody right now, if, if, if this is confusing to you, picture a ship. Okay, so there's a ship floating out on the, the ocean, and you happen upon it, and you get that ship, and it, it's got a hole, and it's, it's, it's uh, the keel of the vessel. So it's got a hole on the bottom of the vessel. You go ahead and repair that hole, and you don't know who the, owner, who the owner is. So you take that ship, and the owner's nowhere in sight. The owner's never come forward, right? Nobody knows that they're a vessel, so they're not saying, well, I own the vessel, right? So while you're maintaining that ship, um, you decide to... Um, uh, first you paint it, and it doesn't look really good, and there's really no benefit in the, in the way that you painted it. So then you take and you um, cover it in gold plating, okay? So that's an expensive repair, right? So then uh, you go along and, and you keep books on this on the repair of this vessel, and you use the vessel and it produces and everything else. And the whole time you're keeping books in anticipation of, of charging the owner if the owner ever appears. And you maintain the profits off of this found ship, and um, you take it and you start, uh, you know, whaling with it, or you start um, crabbing with the ship, and and all of this time you're generating revenue off of this vessel, and whatever it can do, you're bringing in the proceeds because you're the one that found it, you're the one that salvaged it. Now, relative to the human being. The foundling hospital is the thing that found, finds this vessel. The foundling hospital is the one that's repairing it. The um, foundling hospital was established as the 1864 Geneva Convention, with the 1864 Geneva Convention. And that vessel is, the human vessel, is a prisoner of war under the 1929 Geneva Convention. And all of this time, all of those revenues are being created off of that vessel and what the vessel can do. And that's maintaining revenue streams. Now, what happens when the owner comes in? Nobody's aware of that. When the owner comes in, according to the 1666 Accessory Act, it can claim all of that revenue, all of the, the means and interest that has been produced by that vessel. You, you can claim all of that all the way back to 1666. And the reason for that is <clears throat> in 1600s, the House of Lords saw what Congress was doing. And they saw that Congress was maintaining as they were, that Congress was embezzling from the House of Lords to get at the Treasury, appropriating funds to fix those vessels. And what they were doing was it was based on fraud. Okay, so what most aren't aware of, because they don't want to hear it, is each address, each presidential address, is actually addressing the House of Lords. Jeez. And so when Obama comes up and he doesn't address to whatever, that is a bill. It's called a bill. And what he's doing is he's telling the House of Lords, hey, look. My citizens here, all of these people who claim they're, they're individuals and residents of the country known as the United States of America, they're all insane. They're all messed up in the head. They're all criminals. They've all been diagnosed. Here, we can show you a whole bunch of diagnoses, and we need this amount of money to take care of these vessels. And all of that, though, they were supposed to be putting back into the Treasury the revenues 
from the, those vessels. They haven't been, and it's been forever. I mean, in Black's first uh, Black's Law uh, uh, first edition, it maintains that they, at that time in 1894 they were no longer putting the the revenues into the treasury, and they were absconding with them and embezzling from the House of Lords to get more and more funding. So the federal government has been raising both you and the House of Lords. And they've gotten away with it up until this point in time when we are holding them, them accountable for the action of shipping. Because what they have done is they have not allowed free will. Through the use of advertisement, education, and psychiatry, there is no free will. So the vessels have no idea that they're vessels. The vessels have no idea that they need to come in as an owner. The vessels have no idea that they need to do anything other than just be but they have all these pressures upon them. That force is against, absolutely against ecclesiastical law, which was the creator of that treasury. Okay, so you have now, um, since the Bretton Woods agreements, Congress went into double time and started drawing out of that treasury through action of federal reservation. And the Federal Reserve is what that is. They reserve the rights of one sect over another in order to redistribute the other sect. So it's like there's 16 levels of the revenue streams that they're maintaining at all times, over and over again. So they have one estate, and they're raising it over and over and over and overlapping the ability through insurance, uh, uh, meta, soma, and veta, and all of these things in between. So they're just... They're, they're running through that revenue and the Treasury and the Federal Reserves. Well, what happened recently was they tried to appropriate enough to maintain their overhead, and they were not allowed to because the House of Lords, through our case, our lawsuit, that went right to the House of Lords. We said, hey, look, here's how they're embezzling from you. Here's how they're embezzling from the Treasury. Here's how they're defrauding through the Federal Reserve. Here's how they're defrauding the IMF that they created back at the Bretton Woods Agreements. And here's exactly what they're doing. And right now, that's what you're seeing. The the food stamp cuts and everything else is part of that because they could not appropriate anything other than, what, $313 billion, which doesn't even cover their overhead at this time because they're, they're so far out in um, uh, expenditures that they cannot compensate from what they've been doing. And it's, it's absolutely amazing the ability that we've had, but everybody needs to be aware of this and, and stand all as one. Okay, Tammy, um, I know you're heading into the, uh, top of the hour, top of the hour break and, uh, I've got to run out, but I promise I will be listening to the rebroadcast of this. And if you put some links in the, um, YouTube uh, video there um, to help us all out. That will be most appreciated, and I will catch it on the on the rebroadcast on YouTube. Uh, thanks for your time, and have a great day. All right. Be well. to Scottish Sovereigns on the land and the home of No Borders Radio. We're speaking about the uh, genocide. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, the human race is being eradicated by this psychopath, uh, which is a significantly different race than human. It is missing the frontal lobe and is not the evolved species. Uh, wherein it has found a way to own humanity. And in that, um, through the use of foundationally psychiatry, psychology, um, through language, culture, and the patriotism that comes along with that is extremely profound. Um, you know, it goes so far out. The, the patriotism, not only to culture and, and governmental structures, which of course, um, for anybody, any new listeners, um, this is the hardest part you'll hear. Um, the action of the psychological construct is actually 
um, in the religious indoctrination itself. And religion is patronizing something in exchange for protection. Okay. Constitutional theory is patronizing something in exchange for for protection. Democratic theory is patronizing something in exchange for protection. Stockholm syndrome is patronizing your captor in exchange for protection. The only one um, through diagnosis where you know who the captor is is of course Stockholm syndrome, uh, the concept. And the Bottom line in this is, of course, insurance surrounded by the priests, scribes, and Pharisee, just like it always has been. You've got the uh, psychology run by the psychiatrists with the priests, uh, rabbis, pastors, psychiatrists themselves, counselors, therapists, you name it. You've got the scribes, which is all known forms of media, media, scribbling, scribes, writing, uh, whereby you can be described, prescribed, subscribing, inscribed, superscribed. You know, this is all from the outside or inside or from below or above. And this is writing you and telling you what you should be, could be, ought to be, or otherwise should be ultimately through the action of psychology. And in that, it's called law. Okay, these are legal mechanisms and it's this huge machine and within the machine are other um, mechanized parts the medical industry psychological industry criminal industry are all parts of the machine and then you have these buttons within the machine which are actually actors so that you have doctors and psychiatrists and teachers and the majority you know don't know what they're actually doing. They're so compartmentalized. Um, administration, they know um, any type of administrative uh, capacity. Yesterday I had a, uh, a very enlightening discussion with a CIA agent who had infiltrated a uh, men's rights group, and it had come into the group, and my function is to teach what I teach and to neutralize and make sure that everybody's on the same page. Well, a CIA human, their function is to create and maintain dissent. So here they come in with this sexist thing about the female gender. And so I came on and I said, well, you know, I don't have the same ability as a male. So we're two parts of a whole, which is the bottom line. Life just the original word for life is by, B-I. It means two parts animate. And, and that's the foundation of everything. It's just two parts making something animate or making it move, making it live. And it, it goes down to the foundational microbiology level to the, you know, physical reality level, which is, you know, as a female or... As one part, and I, I don't subscribe to being a female, but as one part of life, I have certain abilities. I'm practical. I walk forward without any fear because I don't have a natural predator. So I don't have the impulse control. I don't have to have impulse control when I'm walking through life and just being practical and doing things as I, as I see fit or as um, necessary to my relativity. So as I walk forward, without thought or impulse control, which is my physical makeup. I don't have to fear anything because I don't have a natural predator. But the male logical side, you know, if if I'm about to walk off a cliff, he'll automatically weigh that and reach out and grab me, for example, in in uh, a metaphysical sense. So he'll say, well, you're going to fall off the cliff, and then he'll... He'll weigh and measure everything within logic and tell me why shouldn't be going that direction or, or doing that thing. And what has happened is that they've recreated life and called it law. And in that recreation, that's how man was developed because originally we're just anthropo. We're the higher thinking being that creeps. That's it. That's it. We're higher thinking. We can, you know, I have practicality. Uh, I don't weigh and measure a whole lot until I'm forced to. The male automatically does that. So we protect each other. We, we kind of 
if you look at it from a physical standpoint, the physics of energy, um, the male and the female parts of the physical aspect of energy itself, um, it, it revolves around each other. It um, orbits around each other, the male and female parts. So all you do is constantly we're going back and forth. If I can't do it, he does it. If he can't do it, I do it. And it goes back and forth from the foundation or core of our being. And in the recreation called law, now that's totally obscured. Um, we've been taught language and psychology, so we're all the way outside of our natural state. And now we're in a different state of being. Now we're being pushed and we're being pulled. We're being pressed on. We're being pressed on from below, from all variants through this psychological construct known as law. And in that, <clears throat> we're taught, we're taught and educated. Pedagogy, again, is, is, um, attendance on boys. And that's the major part of this is because he's the one with logic. Remember, I'm practical. I, I don't have to think about all those things. He automatically does it for me, and vice versa. Now, if he, you know, I, I can see the smaller aspects of things, and he sees the larger aspects of things, or the overall macro, and I see micro. And this is our relative nature. But when that's screwed up, and it's it's completely turned all the way around backwards, that's where we come in with the patriotism, because we're being taught morality, okay? We're being taught ethics, we're being taught civility. We're being taught all of these things that are outside of our nature to make us better and better and better product to be more efficient for the corporate structure. And in that efficiency, we are completely, absolutely crucified. And that the metaphor of the crucifixion of Christ or crucifixion of Jesus, the earth, your earth, is so vastly important for everybody to wrap their minds around because it happens every single moment every every thought that you have because those thoughts and concepts are part of this fictional recreation of life it is not life it's an existence as a product so if you can imagine you're just barbie and mattel is stamping your little butt with their mattel sticker and and um you're you're walking along and you're you live in a Barbie house, you live a Barbie lifestyle and here you have everything wrapped in plastic and everything's all shiny and everything's sold to you and you keep purchasing these things and you're a really good Barbie or a really good Ken doll or G.I. Joe doll and it, it's perpetual until you get out of accepting those titles. So if if you drop the title of Barbie and you drop the title of Ken, that's the first part of being absolutely with freedom or at liberty by your own um, honor and that and that's we'll go into that in a moment but um, under this new recreation of life or man created in that thing's image here's what we suffer here's all of these pressures and all of these advertisements around us Here's all of these constructs of language and culture and society and patriotisms. And that allows us to be pit. That allows us to be completely polarized from each other. And this is their foundation of divide and conquer. When you're made secular, when we're all secular and we're all uh, um, Scottish or English or Australian or American, first of all, we're pit and we're polarized from each other. We're not the same thing. Well, what about if we're female and male? Okay, now I'll go in. We're black, white, red, brown, purple, Mexican, Spanish, um, you name it. We've got all of these things that separate us from each other, which allows us to then what? Produce by disliking each other, dehumanization. And all of this, all of this goes in line with the action of genocide. And, um, and let me pull that up now because the State Department actually put out um, years ago, I think it was in the 90s, a um, paper called The Eight Stages of Genocide, and I'd like to read that because it, it might help um, everybody realize in a better manner of what is actually going on, because it's not only... Um, you know, what we describe every day, you know, the polarization, um, it, it occurs in so many variants. Um, the eight stages of, of genocide 
was written by Gregory H. Stanton, the president of Genocide Watch, which was presented in a briefing paper to the State Department uh, years ago. Now, the eight stages are classification, symbolization, dehumanization, organization, polarization, preparation, extermination, and denial. Genocide is a process that develops in eight stages that are predictable but not inexorable. At each stage, preventative measures can stop it. The process is not linear. Logically, later stages must be preceded by earlier stages, but all stages continue to operate throughout the process. Well, they're enabled in some way, right? They can continue as long as they're enabled. They can only occur if we're allowing those titles. The eight stages of genocide can only occur if we're allowing classification, symbolization, dehumanization, organization, which you're paying for through the federal government, polarization, preparation, extermination, and denial. You, you have to get all of those things out of your head, including the denial aspect. This can't happen in my country. Well, it is happening in your country. You're dying by the medical industry. You're being institutionalized by the psychological industry. You're being criminalized by the criminal industry. And these things are occurring. You have been uh, an actor in a war theater since your birth. You've never, ever, ever been outside of a war zone. You are inside of the war zone since you were birthed here, docked. Anywhere you are, I'm not talking about, I know that my accent is probably what sounds like American or whatever else. It does not matter. Do not consider that you in any other country in the world are not me because we're all the same entity. We are all the United States. We were um, subjected to these policies back at the original charters that they came up with. Somebody came into our land and said, well, I'm taking all of this stuff, and I'm going to save them. I'm going to find all these vessels. They're lost at sea over the 1666 Sister Cave Act. That was the fix for that. And the House of Lords came in and said, look, if these vessels ever realize what Congress is doing, this is their rule book on how to get out, how to go back and garner their own estates, because those estates were usurped at the original charters of Congress, which means with transgression, and here's the fix, here's the cure. The House of Lords is the holder of the treasury. And in order for Congress to get any monies out of the Treasury, they appropriate those monies by saying that you have been diagnosed. They're trying to fix your vessel. Okay? I know that it's hard to wrap your mind around this. But the first and foremost aspect of what you have to do now is divest yourself of all that possesses you. That doesn't mean give your possessions to the church. It doesn't mean give your stuff to anybody it means divest yourself of what possesses you constitutional theory entitlement classification symbolization dehumanization against your brothers and sisters organizations allowing them to organize confederacy articles of incorporation polarization Stop pointing at your brother and saying that's not you. That is you. Preparation. Don't pay for this. Don't buy into this. Extermination can only occur if you are being classified. If you are allowing de dehumanization, symbolization, polarization, and denying that this stuff is occurring. No more. No more. Just drop them. Now, I'm going to read this in its entirety so that people realize what these things are. Number one, classification. All cultures have categories to distinguish people into, quote, us and them. By ethnicity, race, religion, or nationality. German and Jew. Hutu and Tutsi. 
bipolar societies, the lack mixed categories such as Rwanda and Burundi are the most likely to have genocide, right? Okay, that's part of the classification. You're allowing them to be classified as something other than you. The main preventative measure at this very early stage is to develop universalistic institutions that transcend ethnic or racial divisions. What does that mean? Stop classifying each other. Stop looking at your brothers and sisters and pointing them out and saying, well, that's brown, that's Jew, that's German, that's Mexican, that's Spanish, whatever else. Stop doing that. Once you cannot be divided, that cannot occur. Symbolization, number two, we give names or symbols to the classifications. We name people Jews or Gypsies or distinguish them by colors or dress. Colors or dress. Now, you're not wearing uh, Prada today. No, you, you just look like trailer trash. Stop doing this. Dehumanization. One group denies the humanity of the other group. And this you can see... Um, in um, Syria right now, Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, their houses aren't built like ours. They live in shacks. They eat weird foods. Okay, stop, stop, stop. That is your brother and sister. That is you in another location, and you haven't been imposed upon by Western society yet. So you don't know what Prada is. You don't know what Disney World is. You don't know what Barbie is yet. You don't know what the medical industry is. Those things are all concepts. You have bought into such a horrifying aspect of your own uh, relative state, that fictional aspect that they've imposed upon you. And, and if you go back into the history of where the medical industry stemmed from and, and the propaganda that came with it, you would be just as sick as I am. Uh, one of the most profound reads was uh, Michael's uh, medical propaganda. You can look that up on on Wiley or uh, Science Direct or um, where else was it? Uh, I also have it in Skype if you want to add me to Skype. T. Pepperman, I can send large files through Skype. It makes it easier. Um, it's just horrifying where this stemmed from and... If you go back, even during just Bolshevik Russia, the propaganda then was sickening because they had entered into the Kazakhstan population, for example, in Russia. They were Muslim population. Um, they didn't know about hospitals. They didn't know about doctors without borders. They didn't know about disease because it hadn't happened. They hadn't been infiltrated by westernized culture yet. They didn't have any disease that was created by westernized medicine. And what happened was they came in and gave everybody... TB, they gave everybody all, all sorts of diseases, and this is written, this is all documented, and they killed off 50% of their population. Well, why did they have to do that? 50% of their population was the elders and the shamans and the per per entities that knew how to combat such as tuberculosis. You know the cure for tuberculosis, the cure for TB is spoiled Mare's milk. Simple. However, the pharmaceutical industry and the medical industry, westernized medicine, doesn't cash in on it if you know about those things. And if they kill off your elders and they kill off your shamans and they kill off your naturopaths and your homeopaths, you have to purchase from westernized medicine. Now, number four, organization. Genocide is always organized, usually by the state, often using militias to provide deniability of state responsibility. Let me read that again. Genocide is always organized, usually by the state, often using militias to provide deniability of state responsibility. Now, earlier in the first hour, we were talking about Bo's mother. She's in a place of hospitality. This beautiful, beautiful, shiny thing. She's a subject of genocide, but it's prettied up, isn't it? It doesn't look like Rwanda. It doesn't look like a Hitler or uh, Auschwitz. It's just called a hospital here, and it's so pretty, and the floors are so shiny. 
And the implements are all shiny and clean. Everything's just clean. And it doesn't look like Auschwitz. So you don't think that it's Auschwitz. But she never had cancer. She's just been dosed with chemical and biological warfare against her. Polarization. Extremists drive the group apart. Now, I was talking about yesterday running into that CIA agent. They had started in on a sexist statement, uh, maintaining that females were nothing, blah, blah, blah. And I came in and I said, well, I'm just another part of the male. That's the other part of me. If I can't do something, he does. And he got so pissed off at me, and so I called him out as an agent. And what he did in response was, in turn, he said, well, because, okay, I posted a link to um, the American CIA and um, human, okay? So I posted the definition, and then I showed him my um, research on, on YouTube when I read the foreign um, and military intelligence uh, from the Supplemental Detailed Staff Reports on Foreign and Military Intelligence from Book 4 of the Church Committee Reports. Well, what he turned around with was he defended the title, but he said he was a Canadian CIA agent, so that made any difference. And it was just so interesting that, you know, first of all, that he would expose himself in such manners in a CIA-invented group. Of course, that's that's how they do this. They're there only to provide you the illusion that you are something else. And that's what that means, extremists. So there's masculists pretending to be the natural male, and there's feminists pretending to be the natural female, when in reality all they are is maintaining false flags so that you think that there's a whole bunch of psychopaths out there and that that is natural human behavior. That is not natural human behavior. They're presenting you with an intelligence production put on by the Central Intelligence Agency, which is a production company of the United States Incorporated. That thing produces all known intelligence, and then it runs it through the Broadcasting Board of Governors, which has international control of all known civil media. Anything that's federally funded here at Revolution Radio, No Borders, uh, These Changing Times, we don't do that. We're not corporate funded. We're not corporate owned. We're not federally funded. We're listener supported so that we can bring you this truth. We don't have editors. We don't have producers that tell us what to say or feed us stuff to, to, to throw out to you. You're only going to get the truth. But on the flip side, you can see what the sheeple are exposed to every day and why they're sheeple. They're falsely led sheep. They don't know what's going on because they're fed intelligence moment by moment, day after day. You know, what is the average television usage now? Eight hours a day, nine hours a day? That's their artificial womb that's surrounding them and all of these beautiful things are going on and all of these beautiful medications and all of these beautiful diagnoses and all of these benefits of being part of the artificial womb are being presented through the Central Intelligence Agency creating artificial intelligence. Creating artificial intelligence or AI. When you go back into the history of, of humankind, of mankind, um, anthropology studies, you can see the effect that this has had on all known, quote, society. Because as we gravitated from just anthropo, the higher thinking being that creeps upon the earth, we have creeped into society, civilization, and all of these fictional created states through artificial intelligence, stemming from one um, being and being created on the other end to be politically correct. We're no longer correct as to our biology. We're very efficient product for policy, corporate policy, which all stems through the insurance. Everything is backed by insurance. Now, number six, preparation. Victims are identified and separated out because of their ethnic or religious identity. Now, and, and they're really ramping it up now. They're, they've gone into chaos. The directors have all fallen out. Um, they've lost their, their daddy and their handlers. So they're absolute chaos. So yesterday I was watching as, um, not only that one CIA agent in the, um, that group, the men's rights group, 
it was so many others. You know, they're they're getting at they they were talking about Indian culture being separate from American culture. They were talking about feminism and masculinism. Um, they were showing um, homophobia, separating it by um, sexual preference, not even gender. You know, there's so many different titles and classifications. But everybody needs to just get back to reality. The being is a being before it's named with a nomenclature and taken, moved around to be politically correct, to be something good for politics. Death lists are drawn up. Members of victim groups are forced to wear identifying symbols. Now, there's pink all over the place from the breast cancer awareness, and there's all these symbols of males and females and feminists and masculists and all of these things. Get rid of those things. As part of genocide, it, it allows it to occur. It can only occur if you're consenting and if you're calling yourself those things. Extermination begin, begins quickly and becomes mass killing legally called genocide. It is extermination to the killer, killers because they do not believe their victims to be fully human. Well, that's actually a contradictory statement because the psychopath cannot view a human as a human. It can only view it as something um, of importance or something of uh, economic value. And so the psychopath has no human emotion, has no human compassion. It, it doesn't have any humanity. It only counts humans as an accountant. And you can see this if you go to the standardizing bodies. Everything is weighed and measured. Congress and attorneys and all of these accountants, um, administrators, they only view you as a number, as a thing, an object. And this goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Okay, The Lord God, not God, the Lord God put Adam and Eve, Adam stems from the word meaning man, and Eve into the garden to dress it up. So the Lord God only put you there to look pretty and make the garden look nice. But that was your garden before you accepted those titles. And what looks pretty? Female, male? Teacher, doctor? All of these other titles? Black, white, red, purple, green, whatever? Those are little clothing that they give you to wear. After they tell you you're what? Naked. Well, you're not wearing the right thing. You're brown today. You're not wearing the right thing. You're white. You're not wearing the right thing. You're black. You're gay. You're straight. You're not married. You're single. You are married. You're divorced. All of those things are titles. They're different characterizations. Different conditions. But they're actually not relative to your state of being. So you need to drop all of those titles. You have to stop playing into this game because the genocide is occurring now. It has been occurring. And you are in the war. You're in a war theater. This is actually called fourth generation warfare, low intensity conflict, winning hearts and minds, psychological warfare, chemical, biological warfare through the drug industries, medical industries, psychological industries, criminal industries. They're juicing everybody up. It's the same thing that happened in Nazi Germany. The corporations came in. In 1928, the Bayer Corporation came in to indemnify Poland. It said, our overhead is too great. All of you people, you're all on social welfare programs. You're all on state employed. We just can't afford it anymore. And they started calling the population and called it Nazi Germany. They presented it as racism. It had nothing to do with racism. It happened to be a culture that was all on corporate wel or um, social welfare, taking away from corporate welfare, which is the first and second welfare theorem. So they killed a bunch of people to cut the overhead. Had nothing to do with racism. Denial is eighth stage that always follows a genocide. It is among the surest indicators of further genocidal massacres. Well, how? Are you denying it? Every year... With the birth rates and everything else in the United States Incorporated alone, the population is decreasing by 
three million a year since the 1980s. It was in the 1960s when they called out for the depopulation. 1974, Henry Kissinger came in and said what, that depopulation should be the highest priority of all foreign policy. Foreign policy means like um, speaking to another country. That's all that means. It means something, communication between one or two countries with another country. So you have the highest priority of all foreign policy, communication between countries, is depopulation. And you can read about this in Memorandum 200 to the National Security Council. That is the global governance. Because Congress, the United States Senate, and the United States House of Representatives got global governance in 1941 with the Atlantic Charter. Now, this was an agreement between Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister at that time of England, and President Roosevelt. It gave Congress global governance. Now, by 1947, Congress came in with the National Security Act, and it introduced you to, one, the National Security Council. And just below that was the CIA. It comes from the CIG, which was the Central Intelligence Group. Now, with the implication of the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, they also recreated the military forces, which is the Navy, Marines, Air Force, and Army, under the National Security Council, under the Central Intelligence Agency. So, for example, Vietnam, it was a Central Intelligence production. You bought it, and you allowed militia to be sent there to kill Vietnamese citizens. Syria is a central intelligence production. Iraq was a central intelligence production. Afghanistan, Cambodia, Korea, Japan, they were all central intelligence productions. Artificial intelligence telling you that these people are at civil war with each other and we need to save them. Somebody's coming in, Hezbollah is coming in, Hezbollah is CIA. Al-Qaeda was CIA. All of these things are artificial intelligence to tell you it's okay to kill people, and it's actually to kill you. Put yourself in their shoes. It's the same thing they're doing now. They blamed us, the citizens, for what's going on in Israel. Just like Israeli citizens are being blamed for what's happening in Palestine. That has nothing to do with the citizenry. That's all a Central Intelligence Agency production. And it's maintained through the Broadcasting Board of Governors, which has international control of all civil media. And you can read this, that, that identical statement at bbg.gov and go to their about pages. Now, when we speak about genocide, that's the end, end of human husbandry. It's a means of culling the excessive population from taking away from the overhead. So the overhead gets too extreme, they start culling the population. Westernized medicine has made it easier and less obtrusive or, or less um, showy or less loud than Nazi Germany was. I mean, we, we just, we didn't agree with that. You know, walking people in front of firing squads and putting them in gas chambers, that just turns our tummies. However, tasing somebody to death, um, shooting them by law enforcement, uh, beating them to death by law enforcement, killing them accidentally, 300,000 times in a year through hospital industry, 200,000 times a year through the prescription medical industry. That's okay, because we really don't think of that as murder, right? It's just soft-sold. 
Now, if you look at the dynamics of taser usage, it's sold as a non-lethal method of force. That non-lethal has an 80% kill rate. And uh, as an example, a bullet fired out of a gun has a 20% kill rate because you can miss organs, you can miss um, things, you can miss entirely. You can wink somebody with a bullet. It has a 20% kill rate overall a taser death has an 80 percent kill rate because it messes with your electronics the, the your heartbeat and your brain function but it's bloodless so it looks like it's not so bad right i mean this is foul this is a quiet soft cell killing genocide that follows human husbandry when the farm animals start not producing what happens they get shoveled off to the uh, glue factory or they get put out to pasture right so when you're put out to pasture as a human being you get food stamps you, you have food banks assisted living facilities you have some uh, meals on wheels it'll come and provide you with a meal a day when you're out to pasture and you're no longer producing you have Social Security SSI benefits welfare benefits housing benefits but those only last so long because once the overhead gets great like it is now look around everybody's on state employee everybody is employed with the school system medical industry psychological industry unions trucking bottling that's all government that's all state employees it's coming out of the overhead what's going back into the coffers nothing and so that's why we find ourselves with such an exorbitant amount of accidental death Accidental suicides. 35,000 males commit suicide in the United States every year. They're reporting. That's not truth. They're being murdered. But it looks good on paper, doesn't it? You know, we, I was going th back through the um, uh, medical trial trials put out by uh, John Wiley and Sons uh, recently. And, um, you know, you've got these chemotherapy and radiation and everything else and it, it'll it'll maintain well there's a survival rate of 79 percent with um, um, chemotherapy use versus 69 percent with nothing but in between they're not saying that you died of cancer they're not they're not saying why you died they're saying that well it's probably the chemotherapy that saved them but then when you go into the actual death rates and the raw numbers, you're seeing that people are dying from sepsis that's not even related to cancer, so it's not reported that it's cancer death, but it's sepsis. That's a major cause of death in the United States, according to the CDC, is sepsis. Diabetes, heart, heart problems, these are all relative to the stuff that you're taking, the prescription medications that you're already on arthrosclerosis and and all of these uh, calcified deposits calcification is caused by calcium chlorine those are those are uh, calcium salts so you're just loading up on on a whole bunch of everything that you can imagine that facilitates your productivity and, and you know foundationally we need to use our own discretion and filter your own water you know try to get all of this crap out of it as much as you can as you can I mean it's so simple a carbon filter you can make a carbon filter you know and you just start really delving into these things and realize that you are the authority you have the capability of everything that I speak about every day you have no idea yet of your actual authority.
And if you could stand in my shoes, you would be in awe too because you're so amazing. And I know that you don't believe this yet. And I know that you're not seeing this yet. But they taught God that he wasn't so that they can own him. That's the bottom line. And when you read the Greek scripture or the Greek um, translation right out of Greek, Wycliffe's version of the Bible, you can see that all of this stuff was concepts. All of it. You, God, start accepting these concepts and you're moved away from yourself. So you start relying on something else. And especially when all of these pressures are imposed upon you, you got a war going on at all times. You you have somebody coming into your lands and you're they're saying, This is mine, this is mine, and you're like, oh, Okay, I gotta pay taxes. What the heck is a tax? And it begins like that. And if you don't accept it, they were implicating war against you. And because you were made secular through the use of psychology, language, and culture, and all of these other things, you weren't protecting each other. So when they came upon you over here, you over there didn't protect you over there. You just accepted it. And then because you accepted it, you had no other option than to patronize it. And at that time, you're looking over at your brother and you're, oh my gosh, he's from a different culture and he has a different language. So now you're patriotic, they're patriotic, and you both are being preyed on because you're no longer together. You're no longer the same entity because you're called all sorts of stuff. Spanish, French, German, Indian, American, female, male, doctor, teacher, whatever. You have all these titles and it's so far outside of your relativity now that you're subscribing to the most horrifying things. You know, I, I look at... The other day I saw this car that was just jacked up on these huge tires and I'm thinking, oh my god. You know, it's like, it's, um, they've taught you penis envy. They've taught you, uh, vagina and breast envy. They've taught you so many things so you're looking at each other and you're, you're not even realizing that you're the same being. It's horrifying. Trying to wrap your mind around this farm. Uh, this colony uh, leaves everyone, everyone, not just you, not just your neighbor, everyone feeling so much loss. Um, you know, it's a normal reaction to feel forsaken because we've been patronizing this thing, calling it the Father, uh, without realizing that that action alone uh, through the psychological implication is, you know, maintaining a father figure. So when you learn that the father figure or the thing you patronize is the one that's killing you and catching in on your estate uh, is the one that's tricking you out, is the one that's prostituting you, uh, the one that's maintaining debt on your back, that thing you know, formerly your father. The only thing that you know, you know, it, it's it's such a loss. But you are not alone. You are absolutely not alone. Um, this thing is there to redistribute all known assets. It's there to make profit off of your illness, off of your disease, off of your discomfort off of every action you take in this life over and over and over again. Every action that you maintain already has a preceding action before it maintaining revenue streams into congressional coffers, maintaining revenue streams into attorney pockets. Now everybody knows who listens to us. The definitions of a turn and to a turn, which means to... Um, pay homage to another lord god or landlord that's not your friend friend of court is not your friend that is the internal revenue service well, what's revenue versus taxation you know everybody needs to be aware of what's going on and, and what happens day after day after day after day 
no matter what you are going through, all of these pressures around you, you're losing your house, you're losing your kids through the court process, you're going through a divorce, you've got CPS on your back, you've got adult protection on your back, all of these things are driving, driving the economy by your productive value. You are seen as nothing more than a thing, a res, a resident, an individual, a citizen. These are fictional creations, man, woman, friend, doctor, teacher. All of these titles are fictional creations to maintain revenue streams into attorney pockets. And the attorney isn't just a, a bar card holder. The attorney is whoever's paying homage to that other lord god or landlord that turns on you. That's the one that gives you up, that delivers you up to another entity and allows your body to be tricked out and used in all of these ways, manners, shapes, and forms. Now, as you are perpetually producing for this corporate structure, what are you getting out of it? Well... $100 a month in food stamps, medical assistance, housing allotments, clothing allotments maybe, shoe allotments. What is that? You are making, by your productive value, upwards of $33 billion, $33 billion in revenue, death derivatives through the medical industry, psychological industry, criminal industry. On the front end, and, and what you know, you have the productivity of taxation. Well, taxation and consumption go together hand in hand. The corporate governance, of course, being the consumer market. They sell you everything you want to buy. I was in a store the other day, and, um, of course, I, I, was, I had a child with me. So all of these gimmicks were, were just flashing lights and and so exciting for this child and at one point she picked up a, a box of um, cloth that sold as a a craft and I'm looking at this box and it's remnants it's material remnants that are being sold as something else so here we are consumer society we're purchasing garbage from corporations that are sold as crafts Okay, let that sink in a little bit because everything that you know is based on this consumer model. You consume insurance, you consume medical industry, you consume uh, psychiatry, you consume the criminal industry, you consume so many things and you put labels on everybody. There's, there's now gay people and there's homosexuality and there's transgender and there's all these things that you're buying. These are concepts. When in reality, those are beings. They don't really have a title in their natural state unless you consume that, unless you buy, unless you participate. And another word for participate is partake. If you partake of this tree of knowledge, if you participate, you have just bought from the snake in your garden. Let that sink in. As the consumptive good you are partaking of the tree of knowledge right now, real time, in your own garden. And when that occurs, that garden is no longer yours because you're consuming somebody else's stuff. Titles, concepts, their garbage, all of these things. You are the consumptive good and you produce from every variant imaginable. And it's time to stop doing that and get off of this farm. Stop buying those concepts. You know, I'm watching um, uh, the mainstream media today, for example, and Charlie Crist, former GOP governor in Florida, he was a Republican governor, he's coming in to run again for governor as a Democrat. Now, if that ain't Hegelian dialectic, I don't know what is. 
And everybody has to really open their eyes right now and look at this because the same thing happened back in the 1920s into the 1930s. The Democratic Party was actually the conservative party before the paradigm shift in 1938 with star diseases. And they had actually implicated the KKK. It was David Simmons who came up with the KKK and promoted this through a government function. He was a Democrat. And as a, quote, conservative, conservative party, he was against black people and everything else. Human beings, society, civil, civilization or citizenry, they were not buying into that. And they were arguing against it, arguing against it. And they knew this because that's the foundation of the Hegelian dialectic. So here they have the KKK. They bring it up to par. By 1938, there was a paradigm shift and the Democrats became the liberals and the Republicans became the conservative party, and then by the 1960s, the liberals came in as the Democrats, the same creators of the KKK, the same promoters of the KKK, came in to offer affirmative action. Well, since there was no racism within humanity before that, all of those funds, those federal dollars that just had an influx in the 1960s with affirmative action programs and female programs and everything like that, those monies all went into attorney pockets, and you paid for it as the consumptive good. You bought into the concept not only of the KKK, the bipartisanship of the Democrats and the Republicans and independents and liberal parties. You bought all of that, and in that, what do you get out of it? Absolutely nothing except for your demise. As is consumptive good, you are used from birth to death and everything in between, cradle to grave. I urge everybody to read Matthew and then go read Revelation and see what happens when you realize these things. And we'll be back next week, folks. Thanks for listening in right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Thank you for your support.